Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the OSU Roundup. Coming up on the show, we're going to hear from Coach Gajewski. We're going to talk to Josh Holliday, and we'd like to take a moment to congratulate Mike Boynton and his team as the Cowboys made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament before being knocked out by Oregon State. And congratulations to Jim Littell's team. The Cowgirls made it to the second round, took on the overall number one seed, and really hung in there before following eventually to Stanford. So congratulations to both the Cowboy and Cowgirl basketball teams. Another team that was in the NCAAs this last week, and that was the Cowboy wrestling team. And joining us now is Coach John Smith. And Coach, you know, as I think about all of the tournaments that you guys have participated in. And when I think about all of the uh, events and the individual titles and the team titles, you know, I, I just wonder, do you ever step back and just think about how incredible it is? Or are they just numbers and, they, and you're so used to them by now? Oh, I don't think you step back. I think that's a dangerous point in your career, especially at my number of years I've coached. Um, you know, I, I think it gets easier to move forward, though, as you get older and, and the experience you have. Uh, for me, uh, you just kind of know what to do when you come back from a tournament like the NCAA championship and you had a good event and, and uh, you know, maybe not exactly the trophy you want, but uh, a good, good effort from your team. You know where to go. And I think that's what really makes it a little bit easier for me is just to, simple for me to move forward because of the years of knowing how competitive it is. It's time to move forward. Well, and you guys move forward with a national championship with A.J. Ferrari, coach, only the third true freshman to do that uh, for you guys. And, um, boy, what, what an effort uh, he had certainly in this tournament. Yeah, he had a great tournament. Um, you know, I, I've heard that was our third true freshman. Um, that's remarkable. We may have more than anyone. I mean, there's just not too many true freshmen that wins no. national championships. There's not too many true freshmen that, that, that starred on, on teams. But um, just the effort he gave, you know, was, was there. Their level of confidence was there. Um, you know, he uh, was able to uh, take what he does in the workout room and be able to deliver it at the same level. You know, that's really hard for a lot of athletes to do, you know, uh, being under pressure. Um, performing under pressure, anxiety. Uh, I think that's the big thing about AJ is that w what you see in that, that workout room is what you see on the wrestling mat each and every time. And that consistency is what makes the difference in helping him win that championship. Dayton Fix, Coach, you know, I, I don't know if this is a fair analogy, but it seemed to me like he was a fighter going against a boxer, someone who tried to really just kind of jab and get the points and then to the point that he ended up with two stalling points which got it into overtime and Dayton was out there wrestling and you know when it all said and done just came up a little bit uh, short. Yeah it came up a little short. Uh, I think when you look back at Dayton in the last 48 months um, he really uh, didn't have a lot of competition you know um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know and just in the end just not seasoned enough you know, he, he got to start back um, with us uh, in the middle of February when we wrestled Bedlam. Uh, got a few matches in before the Big 12, and all those guys he competed against, none of them placed at the NCAA championships. I just think he needed a little bit more tougher competition to recognize, hey, I got a little problem on bottom here. Um, I need to get a little bit more intense in this situation. Um, just didn't have enough season, that I think, that really could have made a difference for him in, in that particular match. But let's just say this, uh, there's not many people that could do what he just did, you know. 48 months with less than 10 matches, uh, that just, it's hard to perform at a, at a high level against good people, but he's our leader, you know. He really is our leader, uh, a guy that people follow, that want to emulate, that want to do some things. Uh, and he's, he's enjoyed playing that role. Uh, and, and sometimes that row delivers a little bit of pressure, you know, but that, that pressure normally is, is something that he really thrives with. Well, and Coach, finally, just uh, the tournament in general, Wyatt Sheets and some of the guys, you had some seat guys seated lower, pull off some major upsets, came through the consolations and, and, and had some great wins. And that's why you guys were able to finish third for the, you know, 60 plus time uh, yeah. in the course of your 86 NCAA tournaments, 89 tournaments. You know, um, we wrestled well, and, and like you said, there's a lot of storylines behind some of these guys. 
uh, White Sheets, who really struggled all year long with, with a severe injury. Um, you know, people kind of questioned me whether we should be wrestling him. Um, it's just, I just knew the kid and knew what type of kid he was and knew that if we could get him at the end, we could, we could have a chance. And of course, he was drawn into the bracket late. And when somebody uh, fell out, ended up being the number 33 seed of 33 guys, ranked wrestling, having to wrestle number one, having to actually win a match to wrestle number one. And so um, when you look at the guys he wrestled against that he got beat by, all three of them were All-Americans. You know, so he just, he, he wrestled uh, uh, as well as he has all year. And, and that's what we count on is, is to compete at the best at the end. And we had several examples of that. Um, well, we had our very best tournament. I would say uh, all nine of them did, you know. And uh, and anytime you just walk away from that tournament, you know, you just you look at it as a coach. Did we perform better in this tournament than we did all year long? And when you can say yes, I don't care what trophy it is, um, it's a good feeling moving forward. And well. so I can say that. 89 NCAA tournament, 62 top threes, and 34 team titles, and another individual title, the 143rd in program history. Coach, congratulations on an outstanding season. Appreciate you joining us here. Thank you. Let's take a break. When we come back, the Mizuno Classic this weekend at the Cowgirl Stadium. We'll talk to Kenny Gajewski coming up on the other side of the break. the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to get what you need and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Welcome back to the show, and we're joined now by the head man for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls softball team, Kenny Gajewski. Coach, always a pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thanks for having me. Mizuno Classic, boy, a lot of softball and a lot of really good teams as it turned out the last weekend. Good weekend. Some uh, good softball played. Thought that Wichita State and UMKC were, were, uh, were very good opponents. Um, and uh, it showed in the way that they played and, per and performed. And uh, uh, it was a good weekend for us without carry until that last day. Uh, it forced us to have to do some things that um, you may not always do. And, and I think it, it, uh, it will pay dividends for us down the road. Well, and that's it, Coach. You've been talking about getting other kids in the circle. You did that. Uh, certainly, uh, you were able to get to Logan in the circle. And I, I, I want to ask a philosophical question, though, real quickly. You know, when Carrie's out there, everyone assumes she's going to throw ground balls or strikeouts. And there's a confidence from your team. Maxwell's kind of in that category, too. What, what is it about Logan, who, who pitches extremely well at times, but sometimes it just seems like behind her, it becomes more difficult? It's a, it's a good question. It's something we talk about a lot of times. I think there's blame on both sides. Um, we don't perform as well behind her for some re reason at times. Um, part of that will also be that against Logan, they put more balls in play. So that's just the nature. It's the average of making errors, not making plays. She doesn't quite have the, the uh, put away stuff that uh, Carrie and Kelly does. Now, I saw some things that may show us that she may be regaining that, and so that may really help us. I talked to Coach John about, um, he talked to me actually about the way he called her game, and he wasn't thrilled about the way he called it with as hard as she was throwing. So we may look at ourselves and go, hey, we may need to coach a little bit differently here and do some things. So it's good for all of us. And I think if you're vulnerable, if you're willing to discuss, have those talks amongst yourselves, getting beat will do that. Um, and, and it makes you go back to the drawing board and, and just kind of take a big, broad look. And uh, we think we may have found a couple of things with her that, that should help us. So I'm kind of interested to see her back out there again um, and, and all that. But there is a confidence when Carrie throws that our team has. I call it the swag. There's a swag. The swag meter is really high. It's really, the needle's really pegging. And, and, um, um, and that's what a, a real ace does. Um, and I think that Kelly is getting into that uh, uh, area as well. But it takes time. You have to earn that. 
Well, and so when you look at your team, Coach, you know, you talked about having only had one loss. Coaching is different when you only have one loss. You let your team go out there and you let them battle, grow up a little bit. They did come up with a couple of losses. So, so now the conversations are probably a little bit different. Yeah, these are good um, learning exper experiences. It's like I've told you in the past, when you're rolling along with one loss and, you know, it's a, it's a what, what people would call a good loss, you know, to a ULL team at their home park or, or at LSU, where, wherever it was, um, it's hard to coach these guys. It's hard to motivate at times. It's hard, you know, you think it's easy, but, but it's not. When you're winning games, it's hard to get their attention at times. We have their attention now. Um, and we've had some great talks. We've had some great sense of urgency and practice. Things that I've been waiting for. Our practices have been spot on the last couple weeks. Uh, we're back to where I think that we've got to be. And be, being at home will help that. Um, and there, there's a lot of factors in this. But we're in a good spot, Casey. We really are. We're starting to see some improvement with our bats. Our pitching has been great. Our defense, we've been cruising along. Then all of a sudden we have a couple of clunker games. I can go back and coach on that now. I can get their attention now um, and we've worked really hard this past week to get some things kind of just cleaned up and I think we'll be in a good spot as we go forward here. Well and the good thing on the back side of the Mizuno Classic you avenged the losses that you had which you've done all year long with the exception of Houston and just didn't get that second game in or it probably would have happened there too but you guys avenged the loss of Wichita State a great outing by Everly and then against Kansas City just an absolute offensive explosion. Yeah, that was uh, it. Was really cool in the Wichita State game. First, Pennington had the big home run. She's had some big hits for this team. Her average isn't quite where she'd like it. I know that. I, I it's not where I want. I want, want it. But no other player on, on our team has had more clutch hits this year. Big hits against uh, what we would call, you know, quality, quality teams. Um, and just continues to come through. It got us going and we just kind of rolled. Um, and then the UMKCC game was a game that I felt like our kids were a little bit embarrassed about from the night beforehand. Um, some things were out of our control in that, in that game. It's, it's, it's softball. It's the way it is. Um, no, no grudges. It's just the way it is. And uh, we didn't do enough good things. But our kids came out with a different mentality, put together a lot of good at bats, and good things happened. Had a great crowd. They were going nuts. And it, just, it was just everything that we needed at that time. And now uh, you need to go on the road and open up Big 12 play. Second part of the season, always exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait to head to Lawrence um, Thursday. Uh, to get, get, get out there and a very, very improved team. Um, some good players. They're doing a nice job of rebuilding that program. Um, I can't wait to see how we uh, perform on the on the uh, road in a Big 12 um, atmosphere, a beautiful stadium. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. It's going to be a fun one this weekend. Cowgirls on the road taking on Kansas and Lawrence. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Best of luck. Thank you. Let's take a break. When we come back, the Cowboys opening up the Obrate Stadium with their Big 12 home opener. We'll talk to Josh Holliday right after this. First step at mercy.net slash cowboys ortho. Welcome back once again to the show. Joined now by Josh Holliday, the head coach for the Oklahoma State Cowboy baseball team. Coach, pleasure to have you with us on the show. Good to see you, Casey. Let's talk a little bit about uh, where you guys are right now, Coach. Uh, you obviously come off a really tough series with a really good Vanderbilt team. Go into Big 12 play. We talked about it. So from the, the pan to the, to the fire, right, uh, Texas Tech, Lubbock uh, on the way. This is, uh, this is a really, really challenging part of your schedule. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think uh, probably where we're at as a team right now is uh, – we're in that battle mode. You know, you can, uh, yeah, different parts of the season create a different dynamic for your team. Obviously, the excitement of opening the season provides all kinds of highs and excitement about getting to play again. Got off to a good start uh, from a wins and loss perspective, and now we've been uh, essentially in tough battles back-to-back uh, -back weeks, not only on the weekends, but also at midweek where we fought some tough battles and had a couple of tough losses. So 
you see what you're made of a little bit. I think that's where we're at as a group right now. Uh, the, the, the stress you feel when you lose games drives you to make corrections and uh, try to make yourself better, and that's, that's the collective whole. So uh, we're being challenged. We'll respond. Uh, we knew that uh, every season has those highs and lows. We're in one of those points right now. We've got to battle back through it. So uh, definitely character-building moment, probably more of a character-revealing part of the schedule, and we'll get through it. You know, one of the things I thought was really good, Coach, though, Friday, talking about one of the highs, you guys knock off Texas Tech down there in game one. You can't, uh, you know, win the series if you don't win some ball games. And so you get the first one out of the way in a Friday night in a really good battle. Well, Parker was, uh, Parker Scott was tremendous on Friday night. He pitched another outstanding game. He's been really outstanding every time out. He, Vanderbilt gave him a good push, but he's been really good. And then uh, Brett Stanley with some clutch relief pitching. Good defense on that uh, particular night. And then we scratch a couple of runs against a very good pitcher. So game one was a high, uh, very high uh, caliber elite Friday night game in, in the Big 12 Conference. And then, as I told the kids, on Saturday and Sunday, we're on the brink in the top of the ninth with the tie-in or go-ahead runs on base. We pushed them hard. We were one magical uh, hit away from maybe flipping the switch and, and turning the board. Didn't happen. So uh, we were that close to going on the road and winning a series. As it turns out, we came up a little short. So you can't get too disillusioned by the actual loss. You have to go back and look at the game and decide, uh, were, were we in position? Were we competitive? We had a few mistakes over the course of that three-game series we'd like to have back, but uh, that's kind of where we were at. We were close. We just didn't quite finish the deal on Saturday and Sunday. For his effort, Parker Scott, uh, the Big 12 Pitcher of the Week, so a tremendous week for him. And then, Coach, you come back here before you uh, open up O'Brate in the home opener in Big 12 play. Uh, and you take on Missouri State. Had them in a good spot, but top of the seventh kind of got away from you. Tough game. Um, any way you look at it, tough game. Uh, just the, the back and forth nature of it, uh, the fact that uh, we fought hard to get back out in front. But you know what? You got to play all nine innings, and you got to continue to be responsive to whatever happens inside the game. And uh, we showed signs of that early, and then I uh, had a tough inning. Uh, bottom line, we had a tough inning. We couldn't quite put the brakes on soon enough. Uh, but after that inning, we had chances in the seventh, eighth, and ninth to try to come back and do something about it on offense. It didn't quite get it done. So as a team, once again, challenged. Um, I know the kids were down, uh, but as I told them, I'm proud of them. I'm not uh, down about our team at all. Disappointed in that particular result, but not disappointed in our effort. Well, and you know, it's interesting, Coach. Now we're, you know, you're hitting the stride into the into conference play. And you, baseball, every sport's this way, but baseball, because there's so many games, it truly is a marathon. You can't live and die by every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so now, obviously, just got to move on and get ready for Kansas State. No, you have to pivot. You have to immediately shift focus and turn and get back into the, the, the mode of working to get better and focus on what we can do with the off day, what we can do with the practice day, and then ultimately what we do heading into Friday's game day. And, Take them one at a time. Um, we, set, we tend to probably operate best in that mode anyway. Uh, that's when you get your back up against the wall a little bit and really dig in and start to, to go back to your foundations, the things you believe in most, and, and not take your eye off uh, your process, uh, your toughness, uh, your preparation, and obviously investing in one another as a team. And finally, Coach, give us a, a quick little uh, info on Kansas State and Pete Hughes' squad as they come in here. Uh, they're a very confident team. I, I think they believe internally that this is the best team they've had in quite some time. Uh, Coach Hughes has worked hard since he's gotten there to build uh, a, a good ball club, and uh, they evidently have uh, a really, really good pitching staff uh, and a good veteran group of players behind them and a confident bunch of kids. So they're a Kansas State team that believes in themselves. They'll be a great challenge for us this weekend, and our kids will be ready for it. Should be a good one Friday night, 6 o'clock, Saturday at 6 o'clock, and then Sunday at 1 o'clock at O'Brate Stadium. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. We need to take a break. When we come back, Inside Story with Jessica Morey. Yeah, she sits down with Coach Tim Brate. Watch the scoop with the quarterbacks at OSU Spring Football Practice. That is up next. We'll make this simple. It's time to go and get rewarded for it. The MyPhillips 66 app saves you up to 25 cents per gallon of gas. That's right, up to 25 cents per gallon of gas. That means for every fill up, you're saving money for your next adventure. That's a reward that keeps on going. The app is safe and easy. Plus, mobile pay offers fewer touch points during payment. So you can focus on going and saving. Download the MyPhillips 66 app today so you can save more to go more. Phillips 66, live to the full. This one is 
Go. There's a Bud Light there. Welcome in. I'm Jessica Moria, and I am here with Oklahoma State quarterbacks coach Tim Rattay, and we are going to get the inside story on the quarterbacks. Now, coach, this is your second season here with Oklahoma State, but it's technically your first spring since COVID wiped out the mm -hmm. spring last year. How comfortable are you now in your second year? Yeah, much more comfortable, obviously, not being able to get uh, the full spring last year to, to have those, I think, 12 extra practices with the guys would have been nice. Um, but uh, yeah, going through a season, uh, kind of going through the up, you know, just the, the daily grind of a season and then having the off season leading up to spring ball, I think was important. And now, like I said, I think I feel pretty comfortable and, and I think the guys are getting more comfortable with me and how I coach. And um, so hopefully we can just keep moving forward. And you talked about getting comfortable with the guys. This is your second year with Spencer Sanders. What's it like now that you've known him for a year and you've watched him play for a year and helped develop him? Yeah, it's been good. You know, it's that relationship you have to build. And a lot of times, you know, when in college, we start building that relationship in recruiting. You know, when you recruit a kid for a, a year or two and then he gets here, you know, for me coming in new, I had to build a relationship with all the guys in, in my room. And so we're still slowly doing that. Um, it's been good. I enjoy the, the room we have. We've got, we got a lot of great personalities. Um, and like I say, just that comfort level between how I coach, how they play, what each person needs differently. Every, every player is going to be different. And I have to kind of figure out how to kind of push a button here or push a button here because it's different with the, each player. And with Spencer getting the majority of the snaps with the first team, what do you expect to see from Shane and some of the other guys? Well, I think it's important for, uh, you know, we talk about in a room, we all have to improve. And especially the four guys that were, were with me last year, obviously uh, Gunner's in here new, but the four guys that are with me, we need to make that next step overall, me and all those guys of, of this mastering this offense. And um, I've been uh, pleased so far. We've had two practices and it's been good. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of want to be able to take that next step for everybody in that room, just that we can get more comfortable. And then, you know, that's the, the key is when the guys can be in an offense for two to three to four years, you've seen the guys here that have had success, you know, especially later in their careers, they, they know the offense like the back of their hand. And that's what we're trying to get to with those guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That is the inside scoop on the quarterbacks with Coach Tim Rattay.